on this eighth Sunday after Pentecost. Whoever you are and wherever you find yourself on your journey of faith, you are welcome here. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's reign, now and forever. Amen. God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal, that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the first book of Kings. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, Ask what I should give you. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father David, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart toward you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love, and have given him a son to sit on his throne today. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, although I am only a little child. I do not know how to go out or to come in. And your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a great people, so numerous they cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil, for who can govern this, your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. God said to him, Because you have asked this, and have not asked for yourself long life or riches, or for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, I now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has been before you, and no one like you shall rise after you. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Another parable Jesus put before the crowds. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. 
It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, Yes. And he said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household, who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. The Gospel of our Savior. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of our loving, liberating, and life-giving God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. As bound as we are to our world, our conception of it, and the way we like to do things, it is no wonder that something as small as a virus which has made such a big change in our way of life, is having such an impact on all of us. Some speak of anxiety, others of depression. There are all kinds of fatigue, and most everyone just wants this to be over. If we are having this hard of a time letting go of the way things used to be in the world before the virus, imagine how hard or nearly impossible it must be for us to imagine our way into a new world, a new world like the reign of God. We are too attached to this one to get very divergent with our fantasy. So, for the sake of argument, think how impactful it would or would not have been if Jesus came to the people around him and said this about the reign of God. Instead of the mustard seed, he gave this advice. Having little and knowing what the, and not knowing what the payoff will be, few will invest in the future. Make a little investment for the possibility of a big payoff later. Instead of yeast into the flour, a little goes a long way, okay? Instead of finding a treasure, when you truly find a treasure, do whatever it takes to secure it as your own. Instead of one pearl of great price, all of your needs can be met in one place, 
there is only one God. Instead of a bounteous harvest of fish, there are many opportunities in life. You won't know what you have at first sight. Don't throw out the good with the bad. Instead of old and new from the treasury, tradition and innovation are valuable. Both must be valued in order to prosper. In general, we are satisfied with our lives, no matter how much we like to complain. And we don't take advice very readily, nor have we developed a capacity to apply good advice across the board. So Jesus, by using his parables, was using another tactic. He told people stories they could understand literally on one level, and he trusted that people knew their value was conveyed not in what could be seen and observed in the world, but in what could not be seen. People understood that Jesus was a healer and worker of miracles. They saw wounds healed and lame get up and walk, and water turned into wine. And the people also knew that the good news of those acts of power was that there was another, more powerful force at work in him, which could not be seen. These parables were meant, were meant to be understood both ways. Jesus would grab their attention by describing something they could readily see or bring into their mind's eye. He also knew that these were simple stories which they could remember and consider for a long time to come. Parables told by Jesus have been bearing spiritual fruit for us as many generations have, as have heard them. Perhaps ours includes some of this fruit. The mustard seed. If you have something of little value and is dependent on you for life, give it, little atten give it the little attention it needs now. In the future, it may become something upon which many will rely. Being a steward bears amazing results. Yeast into the flour. The small and powerless can have a great impact. A whisper can silence a room. People can move a mountain one rock at a time. They build temples, cathedrals, pyramids, great symbols of civilization. Never underestimate what can be accomplished when the spirit is at work. Finding a treasure. The one who meets God and hears of eternal life will give up life in this world in exchange for it. Union with the divine is worth everything. One pearl of great price. Having had a glimpse or gotten an idea of what is being sought on the spiritual path, the seeker searches and when they find what they are seeking, they realize that nothing else is needed. They joyfully give everything in exchange for it. A bounteous, a bounteous harvest, harvest of fish. You will get everything you want. And everything you don't. Bring the whole harvest into the boat. You may be able to make good use of more than you think you will. It is not up to you to judge. 
the master brings out the old and the new of the treasury. Solomon wanted to build something new to honor the God of generations. And God was overjoyed to grant Solomon the ability to bring out of the treasury what was old and what was new. Have you understood all of this? Always remember that the divine we seek is the divine willing to be found. stand as we confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us, sent for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit. The Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and Son, He is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, Depression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel, and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Kathleen, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in the church. Pray for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. For George and Emily. For Beverly and her family.
Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. For all who tune in and watch this online and worship with us. We will exalt you, O God. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal inheritance. Lucille Merriweather. God, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. God be with you. And also God with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them to the Lord. Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, right to give, give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you. Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, for you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. Jesus stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Savior, Jesus Christ, took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, Almighty God, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling Christ's death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the holy body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in Christ. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Savior, by Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us 
this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, all of us together having received spiritual communion, let us pray. Risen Jesus, we believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. We desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving and to proclaim your resurrection. We love you above all things and long for you in our souls. Since we cannot receive you in the sacrament of your body and Come spiritually into our hearts. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, and let us never be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, you have graciously accepted us as living members of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food. In this, send us now to the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Savior. Amen. The blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks. 